Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a full face of some of my high-end and luxury makeup. I picked through all of my makeup drawers and found what is the most expensive. I tried to have a variety of brands, so I've got some high-end, some luxury. Some of these things I absolutely love and use all the time and think they are worth a bit of a higher price tag. Other things just have pretty packaging and other things I may have just held on to because they are a little bit pricey. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do so, but let's go ahead and get started. Starting out with primer, this is one I actually really love. Thought it was a complete gimmick, but they proved me wrong. It is the YSL Touche Clot Primer, and for a couple of reasons I was skeptical about this primer. First of all, it's kind of silicone-y, which I tend to not like in my primers. And then also it has the gold flecks in it, and albeit like that looks really nice, it just kind of seems like you just put that in there, in there to make it expensive sort of thing. But this was one of the first, like, I was never a primer believer. This was one of the first primers I ever used that I was like, oh, this actually makes things better, which was surprising and delightful. So um, it's also part of my project pan, which I need to update you on. I've been kind of failing. But anyways, yeah, I actually do really like this primer. I want to use this because I bought it a while back with Shoppers Drug Mart points, I think. This is the Chanel Le Beige's Water Fresh Tint, and I don't think this is really going to be what I'm kind of looking for today, but if you look up close, it's got kind of like a watery or gel-like texture with little balls in there, and it's supposed to just be like a nice tint of color. I'm going to try it. I'm probably going to move on to my other foundation. It also comes with this tiny, tiny brush. Um, this to me, oh, seems like the kind of product that's like a, you know, for wealthy people with good skin, let's be honest, but, you know, girl can pretend with a couple of points here and there. <laughs> um, I always try to buy, like, when I have points and things like that, um, things that I wouldn't normally purchase, you know. It gave me, like, much more coverage on the first side, I think, because it had all the little ball, like, little droplety ball things. It really does feel super light. Hmm. I actually don't hate it, but it gives very little coverage. And that's the thing with these pro like these types of products too. Sometimes it's like, do you think to yourself? Some people think like, oh, if I'm paying like what was that eighty dollars, it better be like the most full coverage foundation I've ever used. But to me, I just. Yeah, I can see myself wearing this like on really light makeup days, like it just evened things out. I'm going to put foundation on top of it just because it's not the look I'm going for today and I don't think I would use that brush. But I actually don't hate it. It's like, it's literally water. I like it. What I am going to use is a foundation that I do love and I didn't want to love, the Pat McGrath foundation. This is like 90 bucks in Canada. But I gotta say, oh, I really, really like it. I did a full review on it. And I've done a couple of shoots. And when I did my ET Canada and I was on TV, wow, I wore this. I brought it with me and the makeup artist ended up using on, on, it on me. But when I did my um, like a in-studio shoot a while back, the makeup artist had Pat McGrath in her kit and she used it on me and both times it looked incredible. And it is it is very nice. Like, obviously with some of these products, like, you know, I'm a drugstore gal, right? Like, there's amazing options at the drugstore, but sometimes it's fun to buy pricey things or you're just curious or you're a makeup junkie. Like, for me, I probably lean a little bit more drugstore, but I also lean, like, gotta catch them all. I want to try everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And Pat McGrath has a good shade range, which you cannot say for all of the luxury brands. Dior, I would say, has the best shade range in terms of, like, classic luxury. Chanel always, I think, is like a little more pinky. Giorgio Armani, I haven't explored that much. I'm sure what else is coming to mind, but yeah, I really love this Pat McGrath foundation. You know, Spock Conceal a little bit. I think this color might be a little bit light. This is from Marc Jacobs. I'm just going to tap that out with my fingers. I feel like I haven't filmed in a long time. I guess because I kind of pre-filmed a couple of videos and then I had a vlog and a food video. I feel like I haven't sat down to talk in a while. I'm actually vlogging this week. I was just, <laughs> it's like so inception to be like 
vlogging myself filming a video but I like to show like setting up the scenes and everything speaking of Dior I do have Dior concealers these aren't the new ones I kind of I forgot to get the new ones um, I'm gonna use this these are the undercover concealers I have the shade 40 and 31 but yeah I feel like Dior does a good job with shade ranges it's like still not phenomenal but a better job let me know like are you I feel like some people are either like high-end only or drugstore only and I feel like sometimes it depends but I feel like sometimes people like people who some people who I know who don't wear a lot of makeup will only buy high-end because they kind of assume drugstore is crap and they assume drugstore is what it was 20 years ago which I don't think is the case I think it's come a long way and I also I mean I know and a lot of you know <laughs> that a lot of these brands are owned by the same people right came so close to forgetting cream blush but I didn't I'm gonna use this NARS liquid blush this was one of the first sort of liquidy cream blush products that I ever tried and liked this one is in the shade torrid these are gorgeous gorgeous I'm gonna use this brush it's from crown brush no idea when or where I got it but they're very easy they're very liquidy not creamy you only need a tiny bit I like them with a stippling brush or fingers come in gorgeous shades and you only need a little bit so it will last you quite a while oh that's a pretty fresh color I really love these blushes also gonna use a cream highlighter this one's from hourglass very beautiful I really like this one it's in the shade I don't love this packaging though I found this with the with the foundation it gets it's like impossible to put it cleanly back in unless I'm just super messy <laughs> but I just find it gets dirty and then you end up hitting the lid on the product which is kind of annoying we actually speaking of high-end stuff we just got a simple human garbage can and <laughs> we are so pumped like we were like sitting around I was like messaging my friend who had one talking to her, like which version do you have do you get the custom garbage bags and then like she's messaging me asking about my Dyson vacuum and then we got the we got the garbage can yesterday and <laughs> Nims and I were just like she's a beaut because it comes with I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powders um, under my eyes and on my face I love these say yeah so we got the garbage can yesterday and it you can buy like custom garbage bags or you can use like just regular garbage bags and I was like oh let's buy the custom ones and Nems was like no it's unnecessary I was like yeah you're probably right but they're sneaky because they stick <laughs> 10 bags in um, for you to try out and there's like a slot on the back of the garbage can where you put the garbage bags and then there's it just like the top of the lid here with cool get ready with me I'm just describing to you my new garbage can <laughs> that's literally what's new in my life um but it like slips in perfectly like the garbage bag fits like a gold and it's delightful and my friend said she gets the custom bags and on like the fifth last bag it'll be like giving you a reminder saying you're getting low on bags it's just like wow they thought that through because I have a simple human mirror that I was gifted that I don't love. Like, I mean, I guess it depends what you're looking for. I'm using a Guerlain bronzer. I love Guerlain's bronzers. This one's in terracotta number three. Really nice bronzers. This is kind of what they're known for. But I have a simple human mirror that I was gifted, but it's only like, I don't know what the, the, the zoom in is or whatever, but it's like five times or ten times. And it's expensive like that that mirror is probably worth over a hundred dollars and if I was to spend over a hundred dollars on a mirror I would want it to have both regular view and the zoom in view you know because I, I still need two mirrors to be able to do my makeup I guess the idea is if you have like a big vanity mirror and you do your makeup in that vanity then you have that to go close in but like I've got one here this is from Costco that I stole from Newfoundland when I went home but it's broken um, and it's got a zoom inside and it's got a regular side and it has a light and I love it but I wanted something that looked a little bit more modern so um, I actually asked you guys on Instagram a little while back but let me know if you have any mirror recommendations there was one that I wanted to get but then it said their warehouse was closed due to like COVID stuff so I'm not in any rush I've been using my broken mirror for um, two or three months now anyways moral of the story is I love my new garbage can <laughs> I don't even know how we got here 
and it's kind of rose gold but like a classy rose gold I was afraid it was gonna be too pink but it's it's pretty cute it'll be in my new vlog if you're curious to see now you're on the edge of your seat I'm just priming my eyes with the Dior concealer I'm gonna bring you in a little bit to do my eyes. I grabbed this. I totally forgot I had this. I remember like splurging on this years ago. It is the Visart, one of their mini palettes. I'm gonna take the mid-tone kind of brown. I would say eyeshadows. Mm, I love high-end eyeshadows. I think overall high-end eyeshadows tend to perform better than drugstore, but I would say luxury eyeshadows like Chanel, Dior, etc. Um aren't anything to like completely call home about. They have beautiful collections, um, better shade ranges than they used to, you know, great packaging. But I would say like high-end eyeshadows, you know, when I say high-end I mean like Urban Decay, NARS, Fenty, you know, like regular Sephora brands. And drugstore, Wet n Wild, Maybelline, L'Oreal, and then luxury, I mean Chanel, Dior, all those guys. I feel like their eyeshadows aren't that great. Like if I was just like be saving my money and spending on, on luxury, it wouldn't be eyeshadows. Okay, so I put that brown. Now I'm going to take the deeper brown towards the other corner. These Visor ones are nice. I have yet to try Natasha Denona, but like ColourPop. Wet and Wild, everybody has really stepped up their eyeshadow game lately when it comes to drugstore. In terms of the actual quality of the eyeshadow and the shade ranges. Because like some brands have great shade, like great quality, but the shades were horrible. Like mattes at the drugstore didn't exist for until like now. And warm tones. And then on my lid I'm going to put this. Woo, yes. If you've tried Natasha Denona, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you think, like, I find the question of, like, is it worth it kind of tough because I think the answer is almost always, like, logically no because you can get a great eyeshadow look for $20 or even $50 versus the $150, but, and I mean, maybe that's crazy talk, but, you know, like, can it really be four times better? I don't know. But there is something special to owning these kinds of products and nice color combinations, etc, etc. And then for mascara, I'm going to use one of my favorite high-end luxury mascaras. This is the YSL, what do they call it? Uh, uh, Vinyl Couture. First of all, the packaging, I love that it's clear. I think that is just so freaking chic. But I really love the results. But the thing is, again, there's amazing drugstore mascaras. But I bought this one. Like, I was scented in PR, and then it got discontinued or something, and then it came back, and I bought it in a Sephora order, which, like, that's that's pretty crazy for me, honestly. But I really enjoyed it, and I also love the packaging. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, you know? Tons of volume, tons of length, does everything, you know, that I want a mascara to do. It is a little bit scented, which is interesting, and not my preference, but nothing that irritates my eyes, and it doesn't linger. <sighs> How many times? I forgot about this earlier when I was bronzing. Good old Kevin Aquan sculpting powder. This is my third, okay? Am I an idiot? Yes. Is it a great powder? Yes. If I break it again, will I buy it? Yes. Now I keep it in its box, in the velvet pouch. You'd think like for the price tag that it would come with its own armed security guard, but unfortunately it does not. I reviewed this a while back and compared it to a bunch of other products. If you're curious about the shade and if it's going to work for you, this is the shade Deep, which is like a newer one to them. Newer as of in like, you know, a couple years ago. Um, and this is the NARS Ita brush, brush, which was also a big splurge for me many years ago. I was having boy problems and bought it like this is an old old brush pre nims he causes problems but he did not cause the purchase of this brush <laughs> but yeah I love this contour powder it's my favorite contour powder of all time I wouldn't repurchase a 55 or whatever dollar powder three times if it wasn't phenomenal but she's delicate and yes you can fix products with alcohol I've tried it and it never works as good so 
that's that. For my actual blush, I don't have a ton of like super high-end blushes. Um, I do have some Charlotte Tilbury, which I love, but I figured I'd use this one from NARS in the shade Taj Mahal just because it's so gorgeous. It's a shade I lusted after forever. And it's just a really beautiful orange with some shimmer. If you have like a deeper skin tone, I think it'd be beautiful, but I think it could work for everybody. Just, you know, don't use too heavy of a hand. Really beautiful. And a great sheen to it too, but I do have that, I do have that um, hourglass highlighter on. For my highlighter, I'm going to use this Dior Holiday. This was um, oh, maybe two, three years ago now. Um, this is the Rouge Blush Midnight Wish in 001. I loved this when it came out. And it is really pretty. Dior has really nice highlighters. One of the first high-end things I ever bought in my life is this guy. Remember these? There was Rose Amber and Diamond Rose. For some reason, I bought Diamond Rose. It's one of the biggest regrets of my whole life. Okay, I don't want to talk about it. And instead of buying the, oh, the golden one, I bought the pink one. It's 100% smashed, but she's not going anywhere. I love you. Actually, I don't love it. I don't like the color, but I don't love the color or anything. I don't even like it, but it's like, I remember I was at Montreal in Montreal at Sephora, and I was just like blinded by the light and bought it and it'll stay with me forever. To set my face, I have two different ones. I have the Tatcha Dewy Luminous Skin, and then this is interesting. I'm gonna use this, I think. It's the Dior Air Flash Radiance Mist. It's a primer and setting spray for medium to dark skin tones. I actually have the Air Flash here in front of me. I was debating using that before I remember Pat McGrath. I love Air Flash as well. Very, very good. The hype, the, you know, it's worth the hype, kind of. Uh, I spray it onto a brush. I did review it years ago. But let me use this. Um, definitely gives some luminosity really really light texture and I love like the mist that comes out it's not gonna leave like any droplets or anything on your face I am gonna bring in one not high-end product one of my favorite products and very affordable Colourpop BFF 3 because the lipstick I want to wear is quite nude it's filling in the edges of my lips and then this lipstick is just beautiful. It has this gorgeous velvet packaging. Uh, it is the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet. They're always French. Beige New. The French are just fancier than us, you know? It's the same as like if someone has a British accent, you're like, oh, mm, they seem like so fancy and smart. At least to me, but I'm pretty sure that's a North American thing. <laughs> and same as French, any like European, I guess, like quote unquote European. You're just like, ooh, culture. You're so cultured. So this is the finished look. Doesn't probably look all that different than a full face of drugstore, <laughs> but I really love the way that this looks. Everything looks soft and blended and luminous, but not too greasy. And a lot of these products I really do love. The Charlotte Tilbury powders I wear all the time. I love NARS blushes. I love the Pat McGrath. Love this um, Givenchy lipstick. Um, yeah, most of these products I've used actually quite a bit with the exception of the Chanel, and really, really do enjoy a lot of them. Again, you know, you don't need to go break the bank. There's lots of great, like, drugstore options out there, but it's fun to play and dabble in the world of luxury. But that is everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!